Divine Woman. Hello, how are you? I am so excited actually to chat with you because there's been a lot of magic that's been created. <laughs> And as you know, we don't, you know, rehearse these things. So I'm actually just sitting here on the edge of my seat or mm -hmm. medicine ball, I should say. Yeah. Um, just ready to hear it all pour out of you. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm like an eager little audience right now waiting yeah. for you to spill the beans on your experience so that, you know, other gorgeous women in this com community um, who are really, really ready now to step up for themselves can get a taste of what it's like on the inside. That's yeah. awesome. So before we start, do you want to just introduce yourself? Yeah, most definitely. My name is Jazz. I live in Toronto, Canada. I'm 42 and I've been um, working in the pharmaceutical industry for the last 14 years, predominantly in sales. So that's just a little snapshot of me. Awesome. Awesome. So let's just dive straight in because I'm bursting here. Okay, yeah. so let's, we're going to get to all the really good stuff. Yeah. Can you remember, it might be a little bit uncomfortable or probably even foreign to go back yeah. eight weeks ago. Um, you might even want to just close your eyes to connect to that version of jazz when you came to that call with me. Let's just go back there for just a moment mm. and really let these gorgeous women in to how you were really feeling mm. about yourself, about love, about life. Yeah. yeah. When you're ready, just start sharing about what sucked about it, you know? Oh, yeah. I can't believe, first of all, that was eight weeks ago, our call. Um, but I remember that I was coming off of two family weddings. Mm -hmm. So it was two younger female cousins that got married. And I remember sitting <laughs> in the ceremony thinking, why hasn't this happened for me yet? And it was just a very, very honest conversation with myself. Um, I knew that, you know, for the last five years, I was telling myself the same story. Yeah. Which, um, which, was? Which, which was, oh, I'm doing the work. I'm committed. Um, but really, I was intellectualizing a lot of stuff yeah. and not feeling it. And it was for the sake of just, um, you know, doing the work to show that I was doing the work. Um, but there was a reason why I hadn't had a serious relationship in the last five years. Mm. And I was really questioning myself that day at my cousin's wedding, what the hell have I been doing? And I don't want another year to go by and single because yeah. that's something that I truly want is a relationship and to share my life with somebody. And I knew I needed help. Yeah. Um, I had worked with a really um, amazing coach uh, for other aspects of my life. Um, but I knew that I needed to meet somebody who was going to help me through this process um, and help me deal with a lot of my relationship stuff because I knew there was a lot of things holding me back. And I didn't know exactly what that was. Yeah. Um, like I hadn't, I knew it was buried down deep inside, but I hadn't verbalized it to anybody. Yeah. Um, or I hadn't felt it. Um, so literally a week later, I came across your masterclass, um, watched the masterclass that same night, booked the uh, pre-screening call for the Friday. Yeah, Wednesday was the masterclass, Friday was the call. And yeah. then I spoke with you on the Monday yeah. and it was a really quick process. Yeah. Um, it was entirely instinct and mm. listening to my gut. Mm. And eight weeks later, I'm sitting here at the end of your program and it's been phenomenal. <laughs> yes, you are. And what I wanted, we're going to get to all that good stuff. What I want to also let you girls in on is that when jazz showed up to the call, there was a moment, Jazz, you can probably remember, it wasn't long ago, where I was like, listen, hon, in order for us to move forward, you need to open up to me. Yeah. Because there was so much heavy um, coping mechanisms, which is very common, right? We get so used to protecting ourselves. That's what we do. We don't mean to. Yeah. And that was what was coming to the call. And it was very, very strong. Yeah. And then something shifted when we got to what 
your dream actually meant to you. Yeah. And that was deeply touching moment. It was almost like resistance, resistance. I'm not letting you in. I'm not letting you in. I've got to be strong. I've got to be strong. And then you just like fell apart. And I was like, oh, sister. Yeah. A, you're amazing when you let your guard down. And you touched and inspired yourself in that moment. Yeah, I felt that deeply. And I knew you did too. Um, and I think it was a visualization um, you had me do. And it was imagining my soulmate or my future husband um, with his arms around me and my child in my arms. Yeah. And it was something that was so buried deep inside of me. Oh, um, chill. I've got chills. Yeah. And I remember saying to you, I didn't realize I wanted it this much. Oh my God, you're making me really emotional right now. Yeah. Yes. And this is what happened on the call. <laughs> this is what happened. I'm not immune to it. I yeah. see, I do this work every single day, but I'm really stoked that I'm not immune to it because it's like when babies are born, you know, it's like, you don't just go, oh, another baby. So when I see a woman who suddenly gets to feel her dream again, that she had pushed away and given up on, yeah. it, moves, it moves me to tears. It just yeah. does because... Yeah. Because jazz, it's like right now, imagine if you hadn't, if you hadn't allowed that in, like mm -hmm. imagine if you hadn't come and done this process for yourself. So before we move into what you've now, like where you've moved to, yeah, um, just let us in a little bit more on what it was actually like for you day to day while this was hanging over your head, like when this wasn't solved, what was it like for you? How was it impacting you? It was something that I was thinking about every single day. Mm. And it was, uh, let it come up. It was heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you feel? Did you feel alone, isolated? Like, what was it like really for you? Um, Both crying yeah, it was very isolating because um, a lot of my friends are married. They have kids. And I wanted to be there. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. And so if you're honest, do you think deep down a part of you had actually kind of become numb to this and given up at some level. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like totally. And it was, um, Goodness. it was, um, there's a lot of cultural expectation and it's, and I know it's true of a lot of cultures, but Indian culture, it's like, whoa, you're over 40 and you're still not married. There's something wrong with this chick. There's a lot of shame associated with it, right? Yeah. And luckily, I come from an amazing family. Very, very supportive and very liberal. Yeah. So um, I've been very blessed that way because I have friends that are over 40 Indian, still single, and they're shamed like nothing I've ever seen. Yeah. And that breaks down a person over time. Totally. Yeah. I've yeah. seen, I have a lot of Indian women I, that come through. Many won't step up because it's like, I don't even know that, that I, that this is even changeable. And yeah. that breaks my heart. And then I have women like you that come in that are like, I can see the light. I can have that. Yeah. Right? And then you free yourself from truly that cultural condition. You realize that's not who you are. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just that whole stigma around um, uh, high achieving woman, powerful woman over the age of forty, and you're still single, right? It's just it's a, it's a societal um, ideal, if you want to call it that. Like it's very, it's 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 surprising. It actually is getting glamorized mm. to be independent, single woman in her forties with a shit hot career. But yeah. if we just peek underneath the hood for just a minute underneath this look at me and I've got this is not happiness. No. And when you came to me, there was that persona mm -hmm. of being independent, right? Oh, completely. But underneath that all, like you're saying, it's a lot of loneliness and yeah. it's a lot of sadness because like I, we were talking about, it's like you push down your dreams. 
And then when you get glimpses of it and it comes up, you're like, holy shit, what have I been doing with my life? I've been, I have been so untruthful to myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. So then let's get to the yummy part. Um, yeah, it's just, it just, it is amazing. I work with so many women that come in on like riding in on their independence horse. It's like, right. I've got my independence. I've got my career. I'm like, great. And it's like this white knuckling through life. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I'm good. I don't need a man. Yeah. And the, and the truth is, I agree with that. We don't need a man, but we want one. Yeah. That's vulnerable. We don't need one. We need ourselves, And that's what you got in soul to soul. Oh, completely. So, I mean, just, just let us in on um, the people that are just so like, I, I really want to know what this is like. Like, how would you describe the process for yourself? Really mm -hmm. from beginning to end, just, you just really to go through like the things that really stood out to you or what was it that made this so powerful for you? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> on that first call, you said you have something like 70 bodyguards around you and it's all it is it's it's all armor right it's conditioning in life and you building up that armor over the decades and i i know that i was very guarded and what soul to soul helped me do is put down that armor yeah. um and it really honestly it has been so life changing for me because it was pure commitment to myself yeah. and prioritizing myself and my needs and making my dreams a priority. Yeah. And just the program itself, like I was, I was scared shitless. I was like, what is this? What have I signed up for? Yeah. Um, especially that first week because yeah there was a lot of fear that came up and I was coming face to face with myself. Mm -hmm. um, it was all my vulnerability issues and I have been walking through life not wanting to be seen for who I really am. I I've been comfortable being the observer, right? And putting everybody else's needs ahead of mine. And I had buried that down deep as well. And it came smacked me in the face that first week <laughs> like you wouldn't believe and it was just all my perfectionism <laughs> issues that I thought I had dealt with yeah you went quiet that first week I'm like jazz and then you fucking like flew yeah. through the rest oh, of it I was super quiet that week because it was me grappling with my own shit I was like yeah. holy crap yeah I have I've done a number on myself yeah it was my own truth facing me oh yeah yeah. And that, that happens in the first week because we, we, we get so enrolled in this small version of ourselves, and we yeah. really start to believe that's who we are. And suddenly you're like, whoa, and it's very confronting. Oh, completely. And I remember, okay, so the group of women that are in Soul to Soul with, <laughs> with you, and in particular, my group of women. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, my charge. God. Off the like, top. Phenomenal. And it was Margo calling me out. It's like, Jazz, it would be really nice to see more of you. Right? And in her sweet I know. way. And it really, it, like, I, I responded to that. Like, it was crazy. I was like, holy shit, somebody's calling me out on, on myself. Right? And, and then I would, like, I was taking baby steps. Yes. And I'd be going in and watching everybody's lives and seeing how freaking vulnerable they were. Yes. And that whole group consciousness and that collective is a really powerful form. And it's something that I've never experienced before. Like I've done a lot of one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching yeah. um, in a silo, which is perfectly fine for me during that phase of life. But this is what I've needed right now. And I didn't even realize that. Yeah. I'm really glad you bring that up because I yeah. used to do just privates. I, I've done a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and it's not that it's not that that doesn't have its place. Um, I've, and I've had women that work with me privately and then came and did soul to soul. They're like yeah. uh, night and day with yeah. how quickly you up level because yeah. it is through seeing your other soul sisters. And by the way, I want to clarify here. Jazz is not even joking. The quality and the caliber of the women with their attitudes going through the process is no joke. 
it, this is not for anyone. This is not a numbers game of let me just get everyone in my program. Right? You girls know that. Yeah. It's for a certain, so they, every time a new soul sister came in, they would know automatically, like, she's been vetted. She's ready. She's yeah. going to show up because yeah. it only takes one person to come in who's just going to complain, whinge, not be coachable, that brings down the whole collective. So you yeah. got to have standards. And that's yeah. what I pride myself in, in that I know who's ready. I know who really is going to be someone that's going to add value to the collective mm -hmm. versus someone who just wants it to be done to them. And that's not powerful. So um, it's, it's not just, and I, cause I just wanted to qualify that because it's not just like, Hey, put everyone together. That, mm -hmm. If they're not the same sort of energies or at that place in their life where they're ready to really step up, yeah, it gets very diluted. Yeah. And the caliber of women in soul to soul, everybody's high achieving. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking about this. It's similar to like when you transition from high school to university and I'm sure like everybody went to a top notch school here, university everybody's on the same playing field, right? Don't think one's better than the other. Everybody's high achieving. And it's unbelievable because everybody's committed to their dream. Yeah. And you stay in, and it's like you said, you stay in your own lane. Like everybody's yeah. in a different part of the journey, but it's a very powerful way of moving through your own process because you see um, the women that are at the, in the later stages and you aspire to that. Yes. So see you coming in and seeing Margot and Kiki, I was like, holy shit. I'm like, that's where I want to be. So yes. it drives you forward. Yes. Um, it lifts it, you up. Yeah. Yeah. And it inspires you and, and you recognize yourself in everybody. That's exactly right. Right? Because everybody has their version of your fears and vulnerabilities. 100%. You identify in them and it really up levels you in a massive way. Yeah. And as you are leaving soul to soul, you've got the sisters that are coming in going, Jazz, you've inspired me so much. I don't want you to go. Like you're now seeing it in reverse. Yeah. The and impact it's, you're having. It's amazing. it's amazing. Yeah. It's just the impact we have on each other. Yes. And it, it really is a process. So like I have friends that have done other programs and they think, oh, I'm going to spend a week doing this and it's going to totally change my life. No, it's like anything else in life. It's a process. Don't expect things to change overnight because yeah. it's taken decades for you to get to this point. Yeah. But the eight weeks for me, it was unbelievable how many learnings I took away, how, how much I shifted in eight weeks because I was committed to the work. Yeah. Were well, you extremely yeah. coachable and we had to get rid of, I mean, I had a girl the other day, let me tell you, we had a thousand bodyguards. Yeah. So that's making 70 look all right. <laughs> was it 70 that you had but yeah. you ha you had a lot but the point yeah. is is yes it's not just like let's just do this in a weekend that's yeah. too much it's not enough time to shift neural pathways and this process gets messy it's like two steps forward and one step back that's what yeah. real transformation is yeah but you knew you were being held and supported every step of the way you were not oh. doing this on your own yeah and that's you bring up a good point it's like i've never felt this level of support in my life Right, we're total strangers. Yeah, but everybody's in it, and you're truly supporting each other and loving each other, listening to each other with compassion, and it's it's an unbelievable dynamic and an unbelievable environment that's created. Yeah, and just the space that we hold for each other and you hold for us. Um, yeah, I've never experienced anything like this, and I'm a huge skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> Old story. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk about now what it's like. Um, you know, as you know, I, we, me and the, and, the, and the other soul sisters collectively saw you getting rid of these bodyguards where you've moved into your vulnerability and into this softness and just so open mm. and in your feminine versus almost like, yep, I'm ready. What is it? You're just yeah. now like in a completely different energy. What does that feel like? Can you notice that shift? Can you feel what we're sharing with you? Oh, completely. Um, because during our Q&As, <laughs> my fellow queens have pointed it out to me too, but I felt it. Yeah. I didn't know how to verbalize it initially, yeah. but it helped me um, identify it. And it's, it's, it's just a level of calmness, mm. um, softness, 
which I would never use to describe myself previously. Right? Delicious. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, I, I truly feel like I've always been operating here and yeah. it's fallen down to here. Mm -hmm. And that's where my true center is um, because I really feel connected and I really do feel aligned with who, my, who I really am. Yes. Yeah. With your bigness. Thank you. And, and that's been recognized by your own mom and your own family and, and mm -hmm. cousins. Yeah, share a little bit about that with us. That's a brag. Huge brag. Because I just had dinner with an amazing friend of mine here in Toronto yesterday. And she's like, the moment I saw you, I could see that you were lighter. And which means that there was a heaviness before I was yeah. carrying around. Yeah. And it's like what we were talking about before, I just... I've laid down those bodyguards. I've laid down that armor. Like the bodyguards are gone. Um, so it's just, it's lightness and it's, she's like, you feel more open. And that's how I truly feel inside. I feel very expansive. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a really good feeling. Well, it's actually the true, the true feminine power versus the masculine power of proving and showing. Mm -hmm. the feminine power that's ignited within you right now, honey, is undeniable. Mm -hmm. And that's what your husband is going to fall in love with is mm -hmm. the woman that you are right now, instead of a scared little girl trying to protect herself. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what's coming through. There's a certainty in you now. In fact, let me just ask you the question. How do you feel now? Um, Cause girls, there is no dating and soul to soul purely because you're out of alignment. It's like drink driving. Right. Mm -hmm. So some people find that, yeah, I don't have to bother with dating. Other people are like, really? I can't date for eight weeks? I'm like, sister, it's eight weeks. <laughs> you're wasting your time dating right now because you're not in alignment. So how do you feel right now as you're about to get back out there into the world about your dream and this man and baby and everything? How do you feel about it? <laughs> so excited. <laughs> I'm feeling, yeah, it's, it's night and day. Yeah. Um, before it was seen as a chore. Yes. Right? And like I was forcing myself. Yes. Now it's, I am so freaking excited to just put myself out there, get out there and just um, attract what I've been creating. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm super excited. I can't wait until I meet him. And I know it's going to be soon. Yeah. Look at that mm -hmm. certainty. Because mm -hmm. you're in love with jazz. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. For the first time in my life, I'm truly, truly have a level of intimacy with myself, which I'd never uh, tapped into before. Like it's very, it was very foreign. Yeah. 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 We can have a lot of words thrown around, like be your own soulmate, which is what mm -hmm. I say, but be your own soulmate, self-love, intimacy. People are like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have intimacy. No, you don't. You're having sex. That's two, two humans. Yeah with some penetration, that's not intimacy if there's no vulnerability and connection. Yeah. And so now you understand what that intimacy really means, what prioritizing yourself really means. Yeah. As an integrated form versus just this like ticket off the list. Yeah. Can you see now how differently you're showing up for yourself because it's from the, it's heart led now. Yeah. And I trust myself. Yes. Right. I, <clears throat> I didn't trust myself before. I would question my decisions and signing up for the program. It was, it was all intuition. Like I didn't know what I was signing up for, well, but you felt, you felt it, but true. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. I felt it. And then, but the thing is now it's, it's, and that's a muscle that you flex throughout the whole program is you're building trust with yourself each and every day. Yeah. Right. And now that I know that, Oh my God, like, look at what I've, look what I've done for myself at the end of eight weeks. Like I'm, if I trust myself in every aspect of my life, everything's attainable for me. Everything, because it came down to just one thing, a decision that day. Yeah. And that came from here. Yeah. It was trying to come from here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you'll hear when you hear back the call. <laughs> it was really trying to come from here. Yeah. And I'm like, Jazz, do you want to solve this? Yes or no? It's really, and I remember said, I said to you, it's either a hell's yes or it's a no. And I'm good either way. Like it really, really, it has to be that. Yeah. I'm here for lukewarmers. Yeah. Bugger off. 
yeah. we're here to change your life. And then yeah. you were like, oh no, I'm a hell's yes. I want to change my life. Yeah. And then you chose you. Yeah. And you're going to keep choosing you because yeah. you have, you now have the reference. Yeah. It's really powerful. It would have been very, very easy for you to say no in that moment with a million re really valid reasons, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah. really powerful. I was thinking of reasons to, <laughs> how, how to, <laughs> I remember you asking me that if it's a hell's yes or a hell's no, I yep. know in my head, it's a hell's goddamn yes. <laughs> but, but then all like, you know, like finances came up. Of course it did. You were flinging me your bodyguards. You're like, take this one, take this one, take this one. I go, jazz. I haven't got time for this. Yeah. Dallin, we can just wrap the call. Remember? I was like, yeah. what? And then you were like, well, Canadian exchange rate. I was like, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Try my women in New Zealand. It sucks for them. And they still get resourceful. It was so funny. Though. I was like 10 points for trying though. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, when you asked me that question again, then I was like, felt into it. I'm like, it is a hell's yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I truly felt that. I was like, I don't know. Like, I didn't know much about you. You didn't. Or, like, or about the program. No, but you felt something though. And that's the key area here that we're going through life. We are in this day and age with all this information that's out there and the 7 million programs that pop up on Facebook. So we do come in with our armor on, why would it be this? Why does this work? Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is that when people just hide behind, well, I'm going to think about it. Um, there's going to be other programs that are cheaper or whatever. It's like, knock yourself out. Yes, there are. Mm -hmm. But when you're overriding that feeling and that knowing that this is it, you're stepping on yourself. Yeah. And it's okay if you're, if people don't feel it, well, first of all, I probably wouldn't invite them in, but if they don't, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. But when you override that knowing of like, holy shit, I'm feeling something here. It's the same when it's going to come to love jazz. When you come, when you message me and go, oh my God, Lucy met my soulmate. I don't know why. It's just, I just know. Mm -hmm. You can't quantify why you know. Mm -hmm. It's coming from here. Yeah. So when he says, I love you, you're going to go, I love you back. And who cares if it's been just a freaking month? It's going to be like, I feel this. Yeah. It's not, I have to wait six months before I say, I love you back. It's just like giving over to this massive muscle that we have that gets so shut down in our lives that we're all making these decisions very, very cerebrally, very outcome based, wanting to know everything up front. You can't know soul to soul up front. You got to go do it and feel it. Yeah. <laughs> like, even if I explained it, Jazz, you still wouldn't know. Yeah. And I did. I, I obviously explain it, girls. I'm not sitting here leading her in the dark with a blindfold. I yeah. give, the, I give uh, the overview. But what this is about is one thing, getting you to an outcome, mm -hmm. getting you into a soulmate relationship with yourself so you can get out there in the world and be that divine woman yeah. that you were born to be. And that's exactly what you've just done. Mm -hmm. And no one can take that away from you. Absolutely no one. So what would you say to your gorgeous fellow soul sisters in here that are thinking, oh, I've got all this fear coming up and blah, blah, blah. Like, what would you say to that woman who feels your conversation really deeply and knows that they need to change? And this is speaking to them. Um, I would tell them that if you watch the masterclass and it resonated with you, uh, lean into that. Hmm right? Um, question what that is, because that's what I'm talking from my own experience. Yeah. Um, like everything in that masterclass was me. It was, and even your energy, like I felt that even though it's a recorded masterclass, but then when I finally got on the call with you, I felt your energy come through. And I'm like, this chick is not, it feels authentic to me. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is you're not alone, right? Like there's so many women struggling with these same fears, any age, yeah. any phase of life. Yeah. Um, if you want to attain your dreams, you can do it and there is help available. And like I said before, I was like very 
in my head and I signed up for the program purely, purely feeling into it. I use my heart as my brain. <laughs> yes, yes. If, that, if that makes sense. Total, total sense. It's awesome. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, I, um, I would tell them just to, to listen to their heart. Yeah. Yeah. And don't overthink it girls, because at the end of the day, I really want you to hear the transparency of this a lot, a huge handful, like most of my women have to get really resourceful to come and do this because we always can find the resources. Mm -hmm. So stop limiting yourself by your shitty money story right now and watching another year go past because you're not willing to actually leap out of your comfort zone and get resourceful and fight for your dream. Nothing's going to happen when you want it to be delivered to you on a, on a silver platter. Yeah. It's not right. Mm -hmm. So you felt it when you said yes, right? It, it was like, it's an investment, but it's about what you come out with that's worth a lot more. Yeah. And I said this in one of my lives, um, I was greeting a new soul sister to the group. Mm -hmm. It's for me personally, it's been really life changing. Like I am 180 from the person that I was be eight weeks ago. And I didn't think that was possible for me in such a short period of time because we're conditioned to think that we have to struggle. Yeah. We have to, you know, pay our dues, whatever that means. Um, but it felt like the most natural eight weeks. Like I was just, <laughs> there was a lot of tears. There was a lot of discomfort. There was a lot of, you're facing your own truth. Yeah. And that's been invaluable to me. Like, I feel like I've finally come home to myself and, mm. and that's, yeah. Like I, when I think about it, I bring myself to tears. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not losing it right now. <laughs> we got off to a, to a teary start. So we're holding it together now. Yeah, um, yeah, you should, you know, it's, it's true. It's like now you're in awe of the woman that you've stepped into. Yeah. So am I. Thank you. So on that note, darling, um, thank you for coming on and just sharing so beautifully and powerfully, you know, what it was like before and sort of now and what you went through. Um, I could listen to you all day long, um, but I'm going to wrap it here. So girls, you know, if you want to reach out to Jazz, don't bombard her, but is that okay if they reach out to you? Oh, of course. I'll be happy to talk to anybody about this. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can't wait to hear all the updates. This is just the beginning. Oh, completely. Love you. Love you. Bye.